हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी डिस्कस्ड मॉडर्निज्म मार्क्सिज्म कॉलोनियलिज्म एंड सो मेनी अदर लिटररी मूवमेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ओरिएंटलिज्म एज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट लिटररी थ्योरी ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर before we move forward i request all my viewers to please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you may receive the notifications anyways let's start the discussion of orientalism friends orientalism is a new literary theory which we find in english towards the end of 20th century one name has been closely associated with this movement is edward said friends remember this name edward said he propounded a new theory at the end of the 20th century edward said you know who is known as a cultural critic and theorist he argued that european politics they it dominated the eastern countries of asia okay and european politicians or european writers they considered themselves as different from the other okay from the uh, from the east so we had this concept of east and west after post colonialism right so orientalism is actually a theory which studies the western approach okay or the european approach towards the eastern societies eastern people and eastern cultures right so it is all about two different classes it is about we and you right the european people or the western scholars western writers they considered themselves as different from the east people right so we and you it is all about whites and blacks it's all about east and west okay and remember this theory actually emerged out of post colonialism right now let's try to understand the origin of this term orientalism if you go to the root of this word you know then the root word which is a latin word is orients o r i e n s and orients means the east okay and orient means the eastern people or the eastern culture right eastern means we people who are living in india pakistan bangladesh right sri lanka or you can say the whole of asia they are considered as different you know by the european people the study of the orientalism is actually the study of the east asian people and east asian cultures from their perspectives from their point of view there means from western perspectives or western point of views right now as i told you in the beginning you know edward said is considered as the pioneer of this movement of orientalism edward said who was born in 1935 and died in 2003 is a a uh, palest palestinian american literary theorist and he was a famous cultural critic you know who propounded this uh, new theory which is known as orientalism his this idea this theory was first published in a book which is entitled as orientalism in 1978 remember this title orientalism a book published in 1978 okay his this theory of orientalism has influenced you know uh, 
so many other scholars of the 20th and 21st century okay and this theory actually as i told you in the beginning emerges from colonialism or post colonialism and imperialism of the 19th and 20th century now let's try to understand the basic concept of orientalism in detail you know edward said has defined orientalism as you know he said that i quote these words orientalism can be discussed and analyzed as the corporate institution for dealing with the orient okay so there are two groups okay one is the orient orient means those who are colonized people like india pakistan bangladesh japan okay singapore these those who are the colonized people orient and orientalism is actually uh, the it is their european perspectives to look at and to study the colonized people who and these colonized people are known as orients right the west people the western people they see the middle eastern or asian and north african societies you know and they are known as east right so we are known as east and they are known as west in simple words orientalism is the term used to show the western approach western attitude towards the asian people right in in short you can say it is their attitude their approach towards we people asian people right western people see them i know western people they look at us as the, you know they believe that we are unintelligent we are undeveloped or we are uncivilized people so they have a they have developed a kind of negativity or uh, a kind of a superiority for themselves superior complex right uh, so they believe that we are superior and these people eastern people asian people they are inferior people right the western scholars and thinkers see the eastern people as the other they they believe that western people we people are different from the eastern people and they developed this concept of white man's burden okay uh, like mostly european people are the white people right and we people are the black people or brown people so they have this burden which is known as white man's burden they believe that it is our duty to reform this people to reform this uncivilized unsophisticated people who are living in asia right so this is the study of this uh, difference between the east and west and how the western people approach towards the eastern people that study is known as the study of orientalism right you know it is all about uh, the study of colonizers and the colonized people right in short it is a western style of dominating and restructuring and having authority over the orient orient means we people asian people right they try to dominate by by presenting the asian or eastern people as uncivilized people they try to dominate they try to control and command these asian people right now as i told you orientalism actually emerges from colonialism and post colonialism so there is a close relationship between these two terms orientalism and post colonialism orientalism emerges from colonialism and post colonialism and post colonialism is what post colonialism is the study of a culture after the physical and political withdrawal 
of the oppressive power. We know that in India, uh, before 1947, Britishers were living here. In 1947, they withdrew their power. They left, they quit India. They went back to England, okay? But still there is a, there is a feeling that they want to empower, they want to dominate India. They want to dominate all the colonies still again, though politically they are not there, but they try to draw the picture that Asians are uncivilized people. It is our responsibility to reform them, to regenerate this, these people. Right? So this, uh, this ideology has been developed by the Western people or the European people, which is known as Orientalism. You know, Rudyard Kipling, an important poet, has also written a poem in which we come across this line, East is East and West is West and never the twain shall meet. These two, East and West, can never meet again because both are different. Okay. Now, uh, in, in, in order to understand Orientalism, you need to understand these two terms, Occident and Orient. Occident means, in short, you can say, Occident means those who are in Western countries, those who are in European countries. Okay, uh, it is their ideology. They if they try to impo impose their thinking on us, right? So, Occidents are those who are Europeans and Westerns, right? And Orient. Orient means those who are subjugated uh, by these Occidents, right? So, we people, you can say Orient means the Eastern countries, Eastern societies or Asian societies, right? So, the relationship between the Orient and Occident is actually the relationship of power and domination. Occident always try to empower or dominate the Orient. European people, Western people, they try to impose their ideology on the Eastern or Asian people. If you want to understand it more, I have presented this difference between Occident and Orient. Occident means West and Orient means East. Occident, they believe that we are civilized and they believe that Orients are uncivilized people. Occidents are generally the colonizers. They colonized Asian countries, African countries, right? And the Orients are the colonized people, right? And uh, Occidents are the present and we are the past. They believe that we are still living in past. We are running back to time, right? So, this is the difference. Now, let me give you uh, two examples from, uh, uh, from literature where you find this Orientalism, right? Friends, uh, you must have uh, heard the name of Disneyland. It's a picture, right? A series of pictures where you find the character called Aladdin. Aladdin is a character and this character in this picture is presented from the Oriental perspective, right? Aladdin is an Arab character, right? And uh, it is a character in a cartoon series named Arabian Nights. It was the show of children, right? Uh, this Disneyland is the show, show of children and where you find the character of Aladdin who belongs to Arabian countries, right? Now consider these remarks. Uh, this remark, movies that children watch for enjoyment and pleasure rather than instruction unfortunately leave a deeper imprint on a fresh impressionable mind than does an exciting textbook. So in a children's mind, uh, children's mind, uh, their minds are uh, blank slats, right? You can write whatever you want. So, right from the childhood, the children are shown such movies 
where you know this orientalist perspective is presented how i am just going to explain this in this cartoon series by walt disney pictures you know aladdin was the most celebrated character right most important character by that series had but but that series had faced some criticism why because some wrong uh, presentation of aladdin is is found over there unjust portrayal of this character or arabian country arabian culture is presented here aladdin has been ridiculed and mocked at a lot so aladdin who is the representative of the arabian people arabian society he is mocked at by the european people in this movie so you know which is not good right this things should not be shown to the children okay and this was criticized by some of the orientalist critics and the say now now if you if you read this song which is the title theme song of this series cartoon series oh i came from a land from a far away place where the carawa camels roam where now now you focus this blue lines where they cut off your ears if you don't like your face it's babali but they hey it's home now you focus this word mark this words where they cut off your ears if you don't like your face right aladdin and arabian people uh, arabian societies they were misrepresented in such a bad manner barbaric barbaric word is used for uh, aladdin and the arabian society by the uh, western people because you know disneyland is what uh, walt disneyland is a western cartoon series right and barbaric means somebody who is unsophisticated somebody who is a primitive man right so such words were used in the title theme song of this cartoon series and later on you know there was much criticism against this serial this cartoon series and later on they had to change these words in their title song right uh, uh, let me give you another example of a comedy produced by paramount pictures you know the title is the director it was released in 2012 here again the main character is admiral general hafiz aladdin in this movie aladdin has traveled to new york okay he goes to america to tell the secrets of his country's nuclear program right to the united nations right and this character again in united nations this character aladdin has been mocked at has been laughed at by the uh, american people right so this also is an example of how the western people consider the eastern people as uncivilized barbaric people right so it's clear now that the western ideas about the orient orient means we people asian people are not based on the facts and reality okay there is no truth when they say that uh, we are superior and you are inferior there is no such truth but their such conception this belief is actually based on their imagination okay which is completely wrong if i talk about the major orientalists of english literature then we have some british scholars very important outstanding british scholars who are associated with this theory a and they are william jones henry collett brook uh, nathaniel halhead charles wilkin and horace herman wilson right these were some important scholars who studied this theory and popularized this orientalism in literature so friends let's now conclude this discussion by saying that orientalism is a literary movement and theory which came after post colonialism that means towards the end of 20th century edward said has been considered as the pioneer of this theory 
called orientalism and orientalism studies how the east is misrepresented in literature by the west people by the western or european people it studies how the west tries to still dominate the east even after freeing the colonies you know we are now independent india is an independent country after 1947 but still somehow you know they try to dominate the uh, asian countries by you know by producing such literature such movies in which they want to show that these asian people are uncivilized and barbaric people so friends orientalism studies such literature so friends here we come to the end of this lecture if you have any doubts or questions do write to me to in the comment section of this channel and don't forget to like this video thank you thank you very much